Music yeah. recommendations. We lasted yeah. these in April. April. So it's Shit, been a minute, and there's definitely many we could put on here that have come out this year. That's what the court packing episode is for. Court packing, Democrats, look into it. <laughs> and um, we'll talk about more of those Where, things that we may have missed over. Where's your spine, year, Nancy? Um, so What's your first one, Sean? My first one's Emotional Oranges. Um, what? it's what? Yeah, that's a really random name. It they are they're an R and B duo and they go fucking hard. Um, they I believe the girl vocalist she is the vocal coach for Adele and the male he is the vocal coach for Drake I believe. So they're both in the industry and stuff in general and they try to be hidden and try to be like just normal people making R and B and. Fucking A, it's really good. They have um, two albums out, The Juice volume, volume 1 and The Juice Volume 2, which is great names. I love it. Um, one might even say The Juice is loose. Exactly. So the, their first album, though, Volume 1, is uh, very good. And Volume 2 isn't bad itself, but Volume 1 is like where it's at. Definitely listen to it top to bottom. You have uh, Motion, it starts off, and it's just this beautiful R&B. The beats go hard. Um, throughout pretty much every song in here. There's a couple of my favorites. Motion, um, Someone Else is definitely my favorite, for sure, within them. Um, I've had that song on repeat a lot. Um, by the way, both those albums were released last year, and so they're pretty new. Um, and uh, Caesar of We Made a Podcast showed me Emotional Oranges. Hmm. Um, there's a couple other ones. Uh, Unless You're Drowning is good. Um, Corners of My Mind is also good, but it's just... Um, the production is clean, crisp, wholesome. It's just fantastic work, top and bottom that they've done. Their vo the voices um, are very good together. Like you could just hear it going back and forth. This beautiful duets going out through it. Got some other ones that are really deep and personal. Other ones that are just fun and just like getting up onto it. Very, very good music. And like R and B is interesting because you don't like R and B that much. I don't. I'm not a. I'm not too big of a fan of it. But this is like. This is the creme de uh, whatever the fuck it's called because I can't speak French. Cream of the cream, cream, of, the cream. cream of the cream, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, as the French, this is, French ca ca this is cafe and kuchen, okay? It's right. like this is how good it is. It, 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 it's good, it's good. Mm -hmm. um, cream of the crop, whatever. There we go. My recommendation is um, if you're like a music super nerd, you're not going to be surprised by this one, but it's 100 Gex. They, How, I swear I've heard them before, maybe. The, so 100 Gex are one of, they'd be in that category of like hyper pop or industrial pop that we've described. That's right, there um, we go. Okay. Their, their album, uh, Thousand Gex, really got, they released in 2019 and really got popular in 2020, almost as a meme. In 2020, 1000 Gex and the Tree of Clues, which was like a huge remix album, was released. And that was kind of helping Somewhere. it get even more um, attention up in the mainstream. The, the songs are really crazy. Like, it, it's pop taken to its, like a lot of hyper pop is, it's pop taken to its Money really machine, insane, right. ridiculous extreme. Um, oftentimes playing with the motifs of pop, where it's usually be 4-4 four, four beats, making them way too bubblegum, way too insane. And then at that most insane point, making it almost like industrial EDM or not quite house, but just like, really break down beats like, that are just, just like insane. crazy rave stuff. Yeah. Like basically blurring the lines between pop and trance music for sure. Um, so it's like so Sophie time, like Sophie just turned up quicker. Yeah, Sophie turned up higher, faster paced. Um, their album 1000 Gex is a whopping 23 minutes long. So it's very short, um, very quick, a lot of random shit happening at you. I think the ones you would ease yourself into would be like a song like Ringtone. Where it's just a basic sort of like girl boy teenage love song, okay. but then it has that kind of deconstruction that you would get in um, a hyper pop song. And then if you survive that, there's a song after that called Gek Gek Gek, which is just like you're, just you're really going deep. You're going deep bass hipster in that, deep state hipster in that. Whoop, whoop. All right, my second one is I don't know how, but they found me. Um, they also shortened their name to Eddie K. How. Um, I actually saw them. I've heard their song uh, "Choke." It's kind of a popular tune. It's, by the way, they're like the Black Keys, where it's just a um, two two man group, and one's on drums, the other one is a guitarist and vocals. Except the drums isn't doing the vocals for it. But anyways, um, so I saw them open for the 1975 in San Diego, and they were one of my favorite live random live bands I've seen ever because their their live presence was fantastic. Like the interactions and stuff that they did were great, and their music in general 
It's fantastic. Um, Choke is like their song that mo a couple of people listening here will probably know it. Um, I've ran across it randomly before too, before I uh, get into them. Um, they have, I don't think they've really made an album. It's just all been um, like EPs singles, and EPs. singles. Because originally when they started out a few, uh, a few years ago in the early 2010s, I think maybe 2015, 16 17 they were like complete they were like straight daft punk where no one knew who they were and they were trying to just keep it small and secret and then they were like people are like you make really good music so then they actually started touring and doing other stuff um last year and they have some good stuff 1981 extended play which is their one ep um which has choke on it social climb do it all the time are fantastic songs um it's this bridge of like mixing friends for ferdinand with uh, I don't know, insert pop indie band. So it's like blurring lines of also like normal alternative with pop indie. Okay. If that makes sense. Which is a line that you can cross and make it annoying or you can do it and make it good. Which is obviously they do it in the good way because when I first heard them, I was like, okay, like live, um, they're playing. I'm like, oh, this is interesting because I would normally not like this style of music, but they, the production of it and their style of how they do it is very good. So I like it. I'll check them out. I'm very much interested in that like line of indie pop and alternative pop because that will also kind of lead into my next one. Usually Sean's the one coming in with very obscure um, Nordic European sounding oh, alternative sh bands. Oh shit, here check we go. Check it out with the do, the do, something like that. I don't know. It's an O with an um, cross in between it. But the do, um, they're a Finnish French pop band and they sound a lot like friends, uh, not a lot like Franz Ferdinand, but I'd say like Franz Ferdinand and like Phoenix around Wolfgang Amadeus Phoenix kind of time. Oh, so my favorite shit. Um, very interesting like electronic kind of oh, I'm gonna make it alternative electronic kind of stuff. Um, Shake Shook Shaken mm -hmm. is their more recent album from 2015. Very good stuff, but they're one of those bands where like their recorded work is very good and it goes back to about 2008, 2009. But where they really shine is their live stuff. And thankfully, they put a lot of their live stuff um, up very nice. well. So they have a live album, Live at Olympia Paris. And um, this is how I was introduced to the duo, and I think they sound really amazing. They get really experimental live, again, with building up with their um, sound. Because they can almost sound like, um, yeah, like Franz Ferdinand or Phoenix, or maybe even like Porches from earlier that Ooh. era back then. But live, it gets really experimental. It almost sounds like Mike Snow and Fantagram added with into that. Um, my favorite song live of theirs is Opposite Ways. It's just like chip tune, but there's also this pop ballad aspect to it. While you have the synthesizers ring back and forth around in a way that's, you know, just really fun and glamorous. Um, it, it, it's nice and a little bit disorienting at the same time. I don't know. It's just one of those things you really gotta definitely oh, listen to. French and Finnish. But, Interesting. Um, yes, a uh, little bit of a background with the combination, but more on that. Never. Um, <laughs> the best opposite ways, like I said, the live version of that is really good. Um, the live Olympia Paris version is mostly them doing a live version of the album Shake Shook Shaken. So if you start mm -hmm. with an album thing of that and want to listen to a regular album as it should play, then that's the one I would go to. Opposite ways is also on that one. But, um, yeah, they really kill it live. They're really interesting. As far as one of my like palate cleanser kind of musicians that I want gotcha. to have, this is one of those for when I'm um, in the middle of an audio phase reviewing week and want to listen to something just like totally different, preparing for something else. So it's one of those really good ones. Yeah. 